I'll speak today. This is the Karthik month going on. I'll speak on one one verse from the Gopi Gita, which has uh, which is both a very specific as well as a very universal application. So this is the the Gopi Gita, as many of you know, is the song which the Gopis has spoken when they were separated from Krishna. That Krishna called them to perform the Ras Lila, uh, the Rasa dance, but then Krishna departed, uh, leaving them all alone. And they searched for Krishna desperately in the forest, but when they couldn't find him, then they, the Anand Naunchapu described that they went so deep into the forest, it was so dark, that even if they put their hand in front, they couldn't see their hand. They decided we will not be able to see Krishna. They came back to the banks of the Jamuna, sat down over there and then started pouring out their heart. And what came out of their hearts, desperate longing for Krishna is the Gopi Gita. So we will discuss the fourth verse today. And all of these verses have one theme in common. Mm. That is, the underlying message is, so there, uh, the, in, in books, there is a text and there is a subtext. Text is what is written. Subtext is what is not written necessarily, but what is the intent? What is the meaning? What is the import? So the, uh, the, the subtext that is there in all the verses is one thing. Krishna, please come back. Please come back. Krishna, you have disappeared from us. Please come back. So... We will now, each verse is analyzing Krishna, you come back and giving different reasons. Krishna, we can't bear, we can't live without you, so please come back. Krishna, you have saved our lives so many times, how can you kill us now? And being separated from you will kill us, so please come back. Krishna, the thorns in the forest will, will pierce your feet and that pain to think that your feet are being pierced is worse than our hearts being ripped apart. So please come back, Krishna. So like that, there are different prayers. All of them are saying, Krishna, please come back. Now, now among these prayers, our Acharyas have explained this one prayer in multiple ways. So how this prayer conveys that message, Krishna, please come back in three different ways. We will discuss that today. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we will see how, as I said, it is relevant for all of us also. Now, this section begins with normal, begins with an interesting or significant form of address. Like there is Sri Shuka Vacha or Parikshita Vacha. But here it is not Sri, Sri Gopi Vacha, it is Gopya Uchu. Gopya Uchu means that it is the Gopis in plural spoke. So, what does it mean? Is it all the gopis are in chorus reciting these verses? No. It is each gopi is reciting one one verse. But when the gopi is reciting, she is both expressing her heart as well as uh, expressing the collective call on behalf of everyone. So, it's like if there is assembly and then the assembly speaks. Now, it's not the assembly is going to speak in one voice. Uh, it's not like a oath to be recited or something like that. But when different people speak on behalf of the assembly, then they are all speaking individually, but they are representing the assembly. So that Gopya Uchu, in one sense, indicates the, the unity in diversity and diversity in unity. All the gopis are united in their desire to serve Krishna, to have Krishna back in their midst. But they are also diverse in the sense that each gopi expresses her own heart's longing. So let's recite this and then we'll discuss. Nakalu Gopika Nanda no Bhavan. Can you recite on Zoom or it'll make a, a little bit of echo? You can just recite in your mind. It'll cause echo. Okay, so you can just recite in your mind. Yes, sir. Nakalu Gopika Nanda no Bhavan. Akhil Dehi Naam. Antaratma Drek Akhila Dehi Naam Antaratma Drek Vikhan Sarthi To Vishwa Gupta Ye 
विखन सार्थी तो विश्व गुप्त ये सख उदेवान सात्वताम कुले सख उदेवान सात्वताम कुले हियर वी हैव ओके सो नखलु गोपिका नंदनो भवान अखिल देही नाम अंतरात्म द्रुक लेट्स सी इफ आई कैन शेयर द स्क्रीन आई विल एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड सो न not khalu certainly so you are certainly not gopika nandano bhavan gopika nandan here gopika the gopi is the gopi is like a very generic form of address so the gopis are referring to gopika here they are referring not to themselves but to yashoda that you are not the son of yashoda it's interesting that they use the word bhavan over here normally in sanskrit bhavan is a very respectful second person address um, in hindi we have tu or a aap there's nothing equivalent to that in english so sometimes some people use de uh, but that's not conventional it was sometimes used for royalty in britain and europe but bhavan indicates that all of the gopis are having krishna as their lover and they have a very intimate relationship but at this point they are realizing that krishna is not just an ordinary person so that's why the word bhavan comes over there so you are certainly not the son of gopik of ishoda then who are you akhil dehi naam antaratma drek akhil dehi naam dehi naam is the embodied souls uh, akhil means all in all embodied souls you are the antaratma drek so atma is the soul antaratma is the innermost soul or the inner so so drik you are the innermost seer so we'll discuss the significance of this it is not atma drik it is antaratma drik what it means is you know us at our core so you are the basically uh, it means you are the indwelling super soul you are not just a cowherd boy you are the indwelling super soul of all living beings then the question may come okay if you are the indwelling super soul then why are you not why are you no longer indwelling how are you outdwelling so how come you are manifested outside if you are normally inside so vikhana sarthi to so vikhanas refers to brahma ji so how is the indwelling become outdwelling now because vikan vikhanas brahma ji arthi to so he asked for help he prayed to you so with some artha with some purpose he what was the purpose vishva gupta ye vishva gupta ye means for the protection of the universe gupta sometimes they say in hindi means uh, secret and sanskrit also it is used uh, gupta or gudha but actually gupta also means protected protected so there was a gupta dynasty which ruled india the idea was that name also means one who is a protector so vishva gupta ye means for the protection of the universe so why is the indwelling become outdwelling because you were called by brahma ji for protecting the universe and then sakha udeevan and therefore udeevan uday and asta means you use in sanskrit suryodaya suryasta so uday you and you have arisen you have appeared you have ascended uh, so they are again this uday you and indicates they know krishna's position that krishna is not just a uh, child who was born he is actually the divine who has just manifested like the sun rises so where are you manifested satvatam kule satvatam kule means now the gopis here indicate that they also know not only that krishna is not god that krishna is not just a cow, cowherd boy in the sense that he is god but that he was born in the satvata dynasty satvata is another name for the broadly yadu, yadu dynasty there's a lot of uh, complex lineage over there that's why the same people sometimes call as vrishni satvatas yadus so there are further small small categorizations which we will not go into over here and yet while they are telling there is akhilan akhil dehi naam antaratma druk satvatam kule so they are also saying sakha 
Sakha means a oh, friend. So there is this tension in the gopi's heart, uh, gopi's heart that they know Krishna is God, and yet Krishna is their beloved friend. There, in, in the intimacy of love, friendship is already included. Now, in all the higher rasas, the lower rasas are already there. So, friendship is sakya is one of the lower rasas, and there's vatsalya, there's madhurya. So, in madhurya, sakya is included. So, they're saying, "Sakha, you are my friend. You are our friend." So, they know Krishna is God, and still they can't stop knowing Krishna. You are our friend. You are our lover. In the next verses, they will also similarly refer to him as Ramana. Ramana is the lover. So. This is the broad verse. Now let us look at some points as I mentioned. So Krishna's identity, we could say, ha, there is three levels. There can be many levels. For all of us, you know, we have multiple identities. Say we may be engineers, we may be Indians, we may be youth, or we may be young or middle-aged, we may be Andhra or Bengal, Andhra Bengali or Maharashtra, you know, whatever. So we have multiple identities. Now, often these identities overlap, and sometimes now now here we see Krishna's identity at three levels. So Krishna's identity is that he is Rajendra Nandan or Gopika Nandan over here, and if the gopis are just ordinary women, they should know that he is Gopika Nandan. But there are two levels of coverings to his identity. He is Gopika Nandan, but he is not Gopika Nandan. He is actually Devaki Nandan because he is he was born to Devaki. And he's actually not even Devaki Nandana. He is actually the source of everyone. He is Prapita Mahascha. He is the grandsire of the grandsire, as Arjuna prays to Krishna. So, so basically, for the Vrajivasis, Krishna's identity is covered at two levels. When uh, was when Gargamuni comes to meet uh, and do the name giving ceremony for, of Krishna to Vrindavan. You know, he conceals and reveals both of these. He says, in the past, your son was the son of Vasudev. So it's, it's ambiguous wording. You know, the past can be referred to, now Vasudev, Nanda Maharaj thinks that is the past means previous life. But it's not previous life, just now in the past. Of, uh, so he is ambiguous like that. And then he says, your son is just like Narayan. He doesn't say your son is Narayan, just like Narayan. So now that can be like a general glorification. When when parents have a when when a couple has a child, often the astrologers come and may speak some about how virtuous, how glorious this child is. So they say, so they think, oh, it's wonderful. Our child is like Narayan. That means he will be very virtuous, very glorious, very powerful. But actually, he's like Narayan in the sense that he is Narayan, but he's actually Adi Narayan. He's the source of Narayan also. So just like Narayan. So both these identities were, in a sense, concealed by Gargamuni. Mm -hmm. And yet the gopis know both these identities. So we see that the gopis are not just ordinary cowherd girls or cowherd women. They are, they are enlightened souls. They know Krishna's position. And although they know Krishna's position, it doesn't really change their disposition. They are respectful. They say Bhavan, but at the same time, Sakha, you are our friend. So there's a lot going on in this verse. First is their understanding of Krishna's position is revealed. Now, based on that, let's look at how the gopis are praying to Krishna over here. Please come back. As I said, that is the underlying mood of all the prayers, all, all the songs in the Gopi Gita. So here we can I'll again go back to the sun, the sun shared screen and then I'll show you how the flow of thought can go. So let's look at the four items within this verse, four lines. So you are not, you are certainly not the son of uh, Yashoda. You are the indwelling super soul. You, you were called by Brahmaji to protect the world. That's why you, O oh friend, appeared in the Satvata dynasty. So we may say, none of this seems to indicate that, oh, please come back. Where is that? So, actually, it's there everywhere. Let's see how it is. There are different, different ways you can arrive at the same conclusion, but let's look at some of them now. So, one is, Krishna, you are not Yashoda Nandana. You are the indwelling super soul in everyone's heart. Therefore, 
you know the plight of our hearts just see how much we are suffering and please come back so that's one way if krishna is a super soul he knows everything about us he knows everything in our hearts and therefore they play play krishna please 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 return so this knowledge that krishna is in our hearts is both reassuring and sobering it's reassuring that if we are if we are struggling and if we are all alone we feel all alone or deserted then we know krishna is there krishna knows our condition what we are going through so it's sobering at the same time it, so in that sense it's reassuring or encouraging at the same time it can be sobering also because it depends on say if we are inclined to do something wrong and we think we can get away with it we will we will not be caught and no krishna knows that also so it's like if we are walking along a road and suddenly we see there's a cop over there so now if we are law abiding the presence of the cop will reassure us but if somebody is law breaking in the presence of the cop will will concern them will alarm them will caution them either way so akhila dehi naam antaratma druk so the gopis are saying that krishna you know our plight although in one says the gopis have been trans moral you know they left their family their husband uh, their family to come to meet krishna uh, in the forest but they knew they did it all for krishna out of love for him so they are saying that krishna you know the plight of our hearts please come back so for all of us also it is it is very easy in this world to feel lost to feel alone to feel deserted so you know we usually emphasize the association of devotees and that's important no doubt still even with the association of devotees it's very easy uh, nonetheless to get caught in uh, sometimes even we may feel devotees also do not understand us so much sometimes even in devotee association we may feel isolated that's what happened say to draupadi when she was with her five husband she was in the kuru assembly but nobody could help her so she was alone and she called out to krishna so krishna knows us krishna knows our uh, whatever we are going through and therefore that that understanding that conviction that can inform our prayer that krishna you are you please whatever it is please help me please come manifest in my heart please free me from these conditionings please help me deal with the situations please engage me in your service so that's one way the go so as i said this is very specific prayer which the gopis are making but there's all each of these prayers also have universal applications so krishna is saying uh, krishna is being told by the gopis please come back because you know the plight of our hearts so please come back now there are two further understandings here that विखन सारो विश्व गुप्त ये सो कैन वी डू सम कैंड ऑफ नॉट एनोटेशन मार्किंग सो सो वन मीनिंग हेज कम बेस्ट बेस्ट ऑन द फर्स्ट टू लाइन्स वॉट आई टेक्स डिस्कस टिल नाउ दैट इज वन वे द गोपीज आर कॉलिंग फॉर कृष्णा द सेकेंड इज यू कंसिडर थ्री लाइन्स एंड देन दे आर कॉलिंग फॉर कृष्णा सो दे आर सेंग दैट कृष्णा यू आर कॉल्ड बाय द सुपर सोल बाय बाय ब्रह्मा जी to descend for protecting the universe and then the implication here is you now we are also a part of the universe we are in distress so paritranaya sadhu naam so we are also in distress so please protect us krishna please protect us you have descended to protect the universe and if you are going to protect everyone but not us how is that right you have to protect us also and the separation from you we are afflicted so much that we may die so please for our protection come back and uh, prabhupad at in his in his bhagavad gita commentary usually he speaks at the level of dharma prabhupad is speaking speaking basic philosophy and how we are not the body of the soul how we need to follow certain regulation avoid various misconceptions and then we can go to spiritual consciousness by the same time throughout the gita in some some purports prabhupad talks about quite exalted levels of devotion 
So for example, some places Prabhupada will say when Krishna is saying, Man mana bhava, sarva dharmaan parityaja. Prabhupada says we should not fix the mind on any other God or even any other form of Krishna, such as Vishnu. Just focus the mind only on Krishna. So now what does that mean? Is Prabhupada saying that, say, for Ram Bhaktas or Vishnu Bhaktas, the Bhagavad Gita is not applicable? No, that's not his implication. But Prabhupada is actually speaking that in the mood of the gopis. In the, in the Rasalila once the gopis saw Krishna, uh, saw Vishnu, actually Krishna had taken the form of Vishnu. So the, so the gopis offered their obeisances to Vishnu and said, Krishna, where is Krishna? So they're not interested in Vishnu primarily. They're interested in Vishnu as a means to Krishna only. So similarly, in the, so just as so Prabhupada sometimes gives very rasik imports which are hidden within his Bhagavata purports also. So similarly, Paitrana Sadhuna, so when Prabhupada says that the devotees are afflicted and they are delivered, they are relieved by, by Krishna when he descends. So at one level, there is physical affliction. The demons are tormenting, demons are persecuting the devoted. Like the sages were being persecuted and Ram took a vow that I will rid the world of the demons who are persecuting the sages. So that is one level of persecution. But Prabhupada is purports right that the devotees are afflicted because of separation from the Lord. And when the Lord descends, his descent is to free the devotees from the torment of separation from the Lord. So that's a very elevated level of understanding. It's valid. So similarly here the gopis are saying that we are tormented by separation from you. So please come back. Please come back. Now for most of us, we may not feel much separation from Krishna directly. If we feel that's fortunate. It, actually what we feel separation from depends on our primary attachment or primary level of consciousness. So we may feel separation from food, we may feel separation from sleep, we may feel separation from our phone or our computer or from the internet, the net, net is down, whatever. So we may not feel separation from Krishna. However, whatever it is that we are presently attached to and from there we feel a lot of separation, we feel, then we can think of that as reflecting a glimpse of the separation that the gopis will be feeling from Krishna. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that every, everything attractive manifests a spark of Krishna's splendor. So whatever that attracts us, its attractive potential comes from Krishna. But it's a spark. So our attraction to it, over, even if it may be overwhelming for us, it's still a spark. So just as if we want something and we don't get it, it's, it's quite an unbearable thing depending on how strongly we want it. So similarly, it is like that. The gopis are saying, please come back, Krishna. So uh, we could say that, oh, we are so attached that we hardly feel separation from Krishna. That's one way of looking at it. But another way of looking at it is whatever we feel separated from, we can use whatever, whatever we feel separation from or we feel separated from, we can use that as an impetus for remembering Krishna. So we can become conscious of Krishna even in the things that make us unconscious of Krishna. Means we can become conscious of Krishna even in the things that make us unconscious of Krishna. How is that? Oh, why, why is it that this is making me unconscious? Why is it that is, this is so attractive? Because it is manifesting a spark of Krishna's splendor. So right now in America, the elections are going, election results are coming out. So everybody is captivated by that. So now, why is it why is it so captivating? No, Krishna. Uh, so there could be various reasons, specifically circumstantially. Some of us are interested in politics. Some of us may be affected directly by the policies. Some of us may may be in favor of a particular candidate or a policy. Uh, so there could be various circumstantial reasons. But generally, attraction is rarely fully explained by reason. I can give reasons for my attraction, but no reasons are sufficient for describing the full magnitude of the attraction. So if say, if some people, somebody gets in a relationship and they say, I love you. So give me a logical reasons why you love this person. Okay. You know, somebody gives a list of say five reasons. You, say, you know, this could apply to any, this could apply to 500 people by this particular person only. Oh, we are like-minded and this and that and that. That's all true. 
but why only this person it could apply to so many other people so you know so in that sense we could say attraction is uh, attraction it uh, it it can and should be based on reason but attraction we could say supersedes reason it subsumes reason so attraction is never fully explained by reason so that non rational i won't say i won't necessarily call it irrational because when you talk about attraction to krishna it is not irrational it is transrational so if you could say this is a domain of reason attraction is bigger than reason that bigger can sometimes be irrational it can sometimes be transrational so so our attractions in this world might be irrational but rather than simply dismissing them as irrational we can see that that attractive potential is coming from krishna and we can pray that we become we become attracted to krishna like that one day so that's the second import over here now let's look at the third import so here the gopis are saying lastly sakha udeyivan satvatam kule therefore o oh friend you have descended the satvata dynasty now the implication over here is that krishna you are a kshatriya and a kshatriya is a hero who is meant to protect women and we are women who are afflicted we are alone in a forest so even if you reject our love but still at least as per your kshatriya duty come back and protect us we are women who are alone of course they are together but they are all together still they are women they are in the forest it's dark it's night there's no one there there could be so many dangers so many different kinds of predators so out of your kshatriya duty you come and help us you come back and be with us and if you consider this third meaning then the next verse immediately see the flow veer achita bhayam vrishni dhuryate you are the hero of the vrishni dynasty so that is therefore you should come and protect us so the same reasoning is going on so the idea is here the gopis are somehow or the other getting krishna to come back so they are appealing uh, with their feminine appeal to krishna's masculinity krishna you are a hero how can you abandon women who are defenseless and who have come for you how can you abandon them like that krishna please come you are the hero of the satvata dynasty and so in one sense we have this operating principle in bhakti ye na kena prakare na mana krishna niveshet somehow or the other fix the mind on krishna so that same principle the gopis are applying here to say somehow or the other krishna please come back somehow or the other so we also when we have to call out to krishna we have to we want to infuse some devotion in our calling to krishna so we can't go with a one st- or one one strategy for all time when sometimes our mind is getting distracted our heart is not in what we are doing so then how do we get it so we have to see which strategy works try this try this try this try this so for us to persuade our mind for us to infuse intensity in our call to krishna we need to have a multi pronged approach this will work this will work this will work something will work and even if nothing seems to be working if we are still working trying to call out to krishna at least through that we are showing him our sincerity so all so bhakti in that sense is multifaceted because why multifaceted because we are multifaceted beings you know we are all souls who are parts of krishna we are meant to serve krishna but each of us is an individual and you know, one as one aspect of uh, humility humility has many aspects one aspect of humility is that actually if we ourselves are too complex to understand ourselves in the sense that what kind of mood our mind goes through what kind of impressions we have what kind of interests we have they're all very complex you know sometimes say we are studying a particular subject we want to get interested in it but somehow it doesn't catch our interest and sometimes some things just catch our interest we just so it's not that so to some extent sometimes we try to become interested in something so but it's not that we have interests our interests have us so what interests us that depends on our psychophysical nature that depends on our spiritual impressions so we are ourselves complex beings 
and we need to negotiate with ourselves rather than simply instruct or dominate ourselves or surrender to ourselves we negotiate what works so just as the gopis are approaching multifaceted approach or multiple lines of reasoning krishna come back so for us also when we are praying for us it's not so much krishna come back it's rather we have to go back to krishna so o oh soul go back to krishna re engage in krishna's service turn toward krishna but that principle of using different forms of reasoning to persuade ourselves to infuse our call for krishna with with intensity we can adopt that principle also so that is the mood of the gopis in separation from krishna calling out krishna please come back so i summarize what i spoke today that i spoke on this theme of the gopi gita where all the gopis are collectively and individually calling out to krishna and i discuss specifically this fourth verse which shows how the subtext is not there anywhere in the text but it is it is unifying and underlying diverse strands of thought in the text so the gopis are calling out to krishna how how to come back how is that so we see the tensions in this verse krishna's identity is not just yashoda nandana he is not even devaki nandana he is actually the antaratma druk he is the indwelling super soul so the gopis are enlightened enough to know both these levels of krishna's identity that are otherwise that were kept concealed by gargamuni gargamuni so the gopis are saying krishna you are the indwelling super soul so you know how much we are suffering so please come back so krishna knows our condition we know, knowing that krishna knows our condition can also infuse our prayers to krishna with greater intensity and the gopis are saying that you have come to descend you have descended to protect the world protect the universe we are a part of the universe so please protect us also so the for a devotee the separation from krishna is the greatest affliction not just the persecution by the demons now whatever we feel separated from we can see that attraction to it which which subsumes reason as a indication of our misdirected attraction toward krishna so we can become conscious of krishna even in the things that make us unconscious of krishna and lastly the gopis are saying you are you are the hero of the satvata dynasty so you are a kshatriya and we are defenseless women please don't abandon us like this come and protect us be with us come back so we this so so we need to use a multifaceted approach for persuading our mind and pushing our heart toward krishna Uh, because we are ourselves complicated beings our minds are complicated our we have so many conditionings and inclinations which we don't control so easily so we can have multiple approaches and whichever works we use that for moving toward krishna and even if nothing seems to work just our our work at trying to make something work will also please krishna and that way we'll stay on the spiritually progressive path so thank you very much hare krishna any questions or comments thank you prabhu for the wonderful class hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji hare thank krishna. you for the class uh i want to ask you prabhu ji uh like initially when we feel uh, attraction or love for the spiritual master for our guru so how to you know continue that love or increase it rather than you know making sure it doesn't decrease it should like remain consistent or even increase the love for our spiritual master okay um let me see if i can find something over here i spoke on this topic so basically the spiritual master there are two aspects there's the guru as a person and there's the guru as a tatva so that means the spiritual master is definitely an individual person hmm? so a different or we all may have different spiritual masters and that way we understand that the guru is a, a prince person and each spiritual master may have their own moods their own personality their own thrust in bhakti and we we appreciate that we know that that's important now along with that we also understand that the guru is a tatva 
Tattwa means that the Guru is a principle. That the Guru represents Krishna. Krishna manifests through the Guru. And so if you would consider a pendulum, there is the Guru. One understanding is simply to see the Guru as a person. The other is to see the Guru only as a Tattwa. The balanced way to look at it is that the Guru is both. The person and the Tattwa. And each one of us may be attracted to particular aspects of the spiritual master. So when we say talk about increasing the attraction to the spiritual master, uh, so it depends on person to person that some of some devotees may have a lot of personal association with the spiritual master. So and if they have personal association, then relatively speaking, it is easier to develop the personal attraction to the spiritual master. If you don't have that much personal association, then developing that personal attraction might be difficult. Mm -hmm. So uh, then in that case, we can still try, but we will see that it's more the tattwa that is important in the person. For us, it might be that we might be able to better connect with the tattwa. So, I'm sharing my screen to simply illustrate this point. It's a, um, let's see if you can find it. Yeah. So if you consider here, there is the guru as a person and there is a guru as a tattva. And there's person and tattva together. So usually if we talk about attraction to the spiritual master, it's almost always in terms of the person. And then we may feel, oh, now, initially, when we come to know about a person, we may say, uh, read something that about them, we, we hear from them, we uh, read if they have written some things. That way, we develop some attraction. But afterward, from a distance, that personal attraction may not increase that much. So, if you look at Srila Prabhupada and his disciples, many of the disciples who had personal association of Srila Prabhupada, extensive personal association, they they talk a lot about Srila Prabhupada and many of their classes are filled with Prabhupada pastimes. And there are others who may not talk so much about Prabhupada directly. Uh, if you look at Srila Prabhupada himself, you know, he doesn't talk about his spiritual master much. Prabhupada basically met his spiritual master about a dozen times. Mm -hmm. he, he was dedicated, his life and soul were dedicated to his spiritual master. But he didn't meet his spiritual master much. His spiritual master was doing his spiritual mission and his mission and Prabhupada was a grahastha. He was also, of course, running his business so that he could support financially his spiritual master's mission. That was his, that was his intention. But still his service required him, his social obligations required him to be elsewhere. So Prabhupada didn't talk much about, we don't have many, many pastimes of Bhaktisana Sivitaku that Prabhupada told. There are a few he told, and he would tell them quite often, and as per the occasion. But Prabhupada's classes are philosophical. So, you know, somebody might say that, oh, was Prabhupada really attracted to his spiritual master? Well, yes, see how seriously he took the instruction. The instruction was share Krishna Bhakti in the Western world. Now, it was not that this instruction was given only to Prabhupada. No, it was like a standing instruction that Bhaktisana Sattakura had given to many of his disciples. In fact, some of his disciples, he even funded them so that they could go to America, they could go to UK and they could try to preach over there. So, Prabhupada took the instruction very seriously and in that instruction, in trying to fulfill that instruction, he experienced the presence of his spiritual master. So, Prabhupada said, I was never alone. Or rather, he was alone physically, but he never felt lonely. Because he was always with the spiritual master. So now we connect with the tattva through the shiksha, through the through the through the teachings. So in one sense, the person embodies the teachings. So in that sense, becoming attracted to the person is also good. But at the same time, the person is the embodiment of something that's timeless, that's teachings. The embodiment may or may not be with us for a long time or even if the embodiment is there, will not be accessible to us. So that's why it's important that we understand the tattva and connect with the teachings. 
and when we connect with the teachings when we strive to do take when we strive to carry out the instructions in our own lives and in the outer world by trying to share krishna's message then that will lead to a deeper connection a deeper appreciation so just like uh, say small children they naturally love their parents they love their mother their father because their survival depends on that but as they grow up they may become teenagers and they may feel oh my parents have this, this they didn't do this for me or they did wrong this wrong they may have so many they may find so many faults with their parents but then as they grow up then if they have their own family and then they have children then what is happening they are in a sense carrying on the legacy and when they see how challenging parenting is then they will better appreciate their parents okay so just saying they didn't do this they didn't do this and the connection will become deeper because we are trying to do the same thing in our own way so similarly when we try to act according to the spiritual master's instructions and um, take up responsibility that will lead to a deeper connection a much deeper connection so um, now i read i have read lila amrut quite a bit many prabhupad's past times many past times books i have read right thing i was uh, one time in where was i i went to australia and uh, somehow something happened and for the devotees are going to pick me up when i enter into a country quite often i don't have a sim of that country mm. so when i enter there then the devotees are supposed to pick me up mm. something went wrong and they had gone somewhere else and normally when i go into country i carry that at least that country's currency but i had somehow that trip i had been a little hasty so i didn't have any australian currency also so i couldn't go to a phone booth and call them so for one one and a half hours i was worried what am i going to do over here so i didn't even have money to go out and hire a cab or anything it was just my second trip i think abroad so at that time when i was in anxiety it just struck me at least there are devotees who are going to come and meet me it meant some delay but for shri prabhupad he didn't even know when prabhupad came to america he said i didn't know whether to turn left or right the person who came to meet him was not even a devotee it was just like a travel agent who sits put him into a bus and prabhupad had never met the people who were going to host him gopal agarwal and sali agarwal he had never met them the devotees who were going to host me i knew them i knew them quite well they were going to come and organize so i realized that prabhupad's challenge was far far greater and at least i knew there were temples and their programs organized for me i just had to go and give talks for prabhupad there was nothing he had to go he had to find interested people he had to find a venue to do everything so just that small act i would say that that, that particular experience it, it deepened my appreciation and connection with prabhupad much more than simply reading books about him or even associating with those who have associated with him that also nourishes so the point i'm making is that attachment to spiritual master is a multifaceted thing and by associating with the devo- with the spiritual master or associating with those who are associating with the spiritual master we can can deepen our connection with the person the personal aspect of the spiritual master but by studying the instructions and applying the instructions and taking forward the mission of the spiritual master we can connect with the tatva and each of us may based on our situation and our disposition maybe can may, may connect more with either the tat, the person or the tatva that's fine whichever works out does it answer your question yes prabhu ji thank you so much thank you re krishna anyone else jitendra yes, prabhu yeah i have two questions um, only two yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so yeah if, uh, first one prabhu ji you mentioned that uh, just like the gopis they they use multiple approaches to convey that convey that they want to say that krishna please come back similarly we as sadhakas we have to use multiple approaches in order for us to go closer to krishna right Correct. so in in coming up with such multiple approaches how do we know that we are not going too much into fanaticism like for example anything that happens oh this is krishna's hand you know there is krishna's hand in this you know uh, it it might actually be that i have messed something up due to which something is happening in my life but then i just say that oh this is krishna's hand in in this 
so in one sense it is another approach to take myself closer to krishna but then it is completely invalid so how do we know which approach is valid and which approach is not okay that's a good question so mm, how do we know when we are using multiple approaches to move toward krishna well falena parichayate does it actually take us toward krishna that means uh, what is the end result of whatever we are doing uh if uh, we are remembering krishna and in that sense it's a positive effect that's good but if that remembrance of krishna is so there is there is devotional service so there is the mood of devotion and there is also the activity of service so if we are doing only one of the two then there is something deficient so yes i have messed up some things and uh, then i pray to krishna i cannot simply say this is this is krishna's arrangement but that doesn't mean that it is outside of krishna's arrangement see krishna's arrangements are inclusive enough to include even our mistakes our mistakes are not krishna's plan but krishna's plan can include and accommodate our mistakes also so we don't uh, deny the sense of responsibility okay i did mess up, mess up but still krishna has a plan and krishna's plan is resilient or resourceful enough uh, it is to include our mistakes also you know the famously the story of durvasa muni where he was sent by duryodhan after uh, in the afternoon after draupadi had eaten uh, and then they had nothing to offer because akshay patra had become kshaya by that time their imperishable food food vessel could no, would no longer give food after draupadi had eaten so what did they do at that time somehow there was a little morsel of food left and krishna took that and through that everybody was satisfied now that's wonderful that story and that's the thrust of the story but another point is how was that morsel of food remaining over there uh, normally you know any um, what do you say people who have a sense of tidiness they wash their vessels after the using them even if you don't wash them immediately if we have a special vessel say if we have served somebody food in a silver vessel or a golden vessel at least that we will wash carefully this is akshay patra so whether it was draupadi or some of her some of the maids assisting her uh, some maids had come with them to the forest also although you still couldn't pay them but still they were so attached that they came with them some maids and some servants so it could be the mistake of one of them but it is like the ropa's household so we could say it's her mistake but krishna used that mistake to further his plan mm-hmm. so nothing is outside the ambit of krishna consciousness even our worst mistakes we can also remember krishna through them but the thrust needs to be on how can i serve krishna now because the essence there can be many many aspects of krishna consciousness but the essence if we want to say put in that way essence of krishna consciousness is that we are meant to serve krishna so sometimes our service can be simply through remembrance now i'm not minimizing remembrance in any way when i use simply but i'm saying that exclusively through remembrance but sometimes our service also has to be expressed through actions so If the, if the remembrance is becomes a substitute for action when action is necessary then that kind of krishna consciousness is not so favorable if the remembrance enhances the action that we can do then that's wonderful so are there are there improper ways of being krishna conscious of seeing krishna's hand in our life yes there can be many as i said you know we can't blame krishna uh, and wash off our hands of wash of our responsibility for things which we have made a mistake for so that that would be an improper version of krishna consciousness but rather than simply thinking of it that this is wrong we can if we our purpose is clear so then we will be able to direct everything toward krishna so what would be an improper way of looking at krishna con- uh, improper um example in the prabhupad came one some lady came to prabhupad and she said swami ji i had gone to take darshan to jagannath and when i went into the temple my sari flew away then she said that this is krishna treating me like a gopi and taking away my clothes now uh, prabhupad was very displeased this is nonsense prabhupad said so then so there could be many ways in which 
if our understanding of krishna consciousness is going against uh, going against other principles in krishna consciousness so other principles could be we have to do some practical seva we have to behave according to particular culture so we have to be responsible so it's i remember what a devotee had gone for distribution and he lost he he had gone for distribution and somehow he carelessly lost all the lakshmi he had got from distribution is a brahmachari so and he came back and he told the temple leader and temple leader was upset you lost all the money he says now prabhu no be calm krishna says be equipoise in uh, profit and loss so he said that is for your own for your own personal purposes if it's krishna's concern then you have to be concerned when the temple was being jew temple was being stolen uh, by mr n prabhupada was not just calmly equipoised prabhupada was concerned prabhupada at that time was agitated so yes equanimity is also an important teaching but the principle is ultimately everything is for the service of krishna so sometimes our emotions will obstruct us in the service of krishna and then we have to keep our emotions calm so arjuna's emotions were obstructing him so at that time in the bhagavad gita there is a lot of emphasis on equanimity but sometimes uh, the emotions may be what are required to express our service to krishna mm. as if we say that bhava grahi janardan so if there's no emotion then what is of essence what is our offering to krishna so we can have this principle anukulya sankalpa pratikulya sarvajanam that see whether our service to krishna our connection with krishna whatever is it being enhanced by whatever form of reasoning or resourcefulness we are using that but based on that criteria uh, we can decide does it answer your question yes prabhu ji definitely thank you anyone else hari krishna prabhu ji standard pranam standard thank you so much for a wonderful class um without taking too much time i just have a question so i feel that um, i'm so far away from feeling separation from krishna for sure because of the many anarthas you know we have and also attractions and so on um so but any li- little steps that i keep taking towards spiritual progress i feel that my anarthas are just pulling me down and i feel discouraged um to you know move forward um how do i stay kind of en- encouraged um how do i take this message from this gopis um, you know um, song yeah. and uh, and keep me keep myself encouraged in the bhakti yoga hmm oh okay this is a tough situation all of us experience that uh, it's that you know whatever attraction to uh, krishna that we have sometimes it's it just stays and it goes we feel we are far away from, it doesn't stay for long it comes and it goes and we feel we are so far away from krishna yes again if i go back to the principle of anukulya sankalpa pratikulya sarvajanam it is our responsibility to keep ourselves encouraged in krishna consciousness now prabhupad would say chant hari krishna and be happy so you know this is both uh we could say this is a causal instruction as well as it's a dual instruction causal means chant hari krishna and that will make you happy but also the dual instruction means chant hari krishna and cultivate a happy disposition both are instructions there are two distinct instructions also so atavai kavayo nityam bhaktim paramayamuda vasudeve bhagavati kurvante atma prasadinam in 1223 the bhagavatam said that therefore the great sages perform with great joy the process of bhakti which gives the greatest joy so what is the idea over there is it the process will give us the supreme joy but it has it is performed also with joy why perform with joy it's say consider the situation where somebody is sick and they have a long road to recovery but still they have got found a treatment that works and because the treatment works they are recovering they are better than what they were earlier although the road to recovery is still far long way ahead so they can be great they, they can be grateful that they are on the road to recovery they have got a treatment that works so similarly for us 
sometimes when we read scriptures and we read especially the exalted devotees like say we read about the gopis or we read about lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and other associates of his their exalted levels of devotion we feel like i am so far away from this which is true we are far away but you know we, we we can have those as our ideals at the same time we also need to look at, from a progressive perspective wherever we were in the past have we come ahead well we can say we have we definitely come ahead we have developed some understanding of krishna some appreciation for krishna as compared to what it was a few years ago or a few decades ago depending on how long we have been practicing so we can look back and encourage ourselves and also we need to find out some things in bhakti which also at our present level give us a sense of uh, we could say devotional self worth that i am also doing something for krishna that so if we are doing some particular service a particular kind of contribution we are making the world may not uh, applaud us for that that's okay but that is our offering to krishna yes there is it's a, it's like when there will some devotees who may be like hanuman carrying big big bridges big 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 boulders across and we might be like a squirrel but we do our part so that so we need to feel also that i am doing my part and it is important not important in an egoistic sense but in the sense of it being a personal offering to krishna quite a, a, of i'm just now next week i'm giving a class on self esteem so so one of the things i is one of the main themes i'm going to speak in that is that we feel discouraged often because of our inability to do something wonderful whether it be in the material world or even in the spiritual domain do something wonderful experience something wonderful but actually you know our our discouragement is caused not so much by our inability to do something wonderful as by our unwillingness to do something worthwhile we don't have to do something wonderful but can we do something worthwhile yes actually krishna consciousness provides us opportunities to do something worthwhile at every moment and every moment we are remembering krishna every moment we are serving krishna that's worthwhile and even from a broader perspective there are we all can do something worthwhile you know so if we focus more on the worthwhile rather than on the wonderful then we can see krishna consciousness does enrich our life we could be wasting our time in so many things say now i won't call all all politics as simply a waste of time but obsession with politics is a waste of time and if we didn't have krishna consciousness we would have been it's possible that with politics or sports or movies or whatever else we might be wasting so much of our time but we are doing something worthwhile we are learning something we are sharing something we are providing facilities by which building up the facility by which people are people are learning something worthwhile so if we shift our focus Uh, that you know, am I doing something worthwhile? Am I contributing to something worthwhile? Yes, I am, and I am fortunate for, because Krishna is letting me do that. So I have something. So our self worth, if we tie it to the ability to do something worthwhile, so something wonderful, we will always feel not only that we will not we will not only not always be able to do something wonderful, but we will always be insecure. but if we tie our self worth to just the willingness to do something worthwhile then we will have we will not feel that discouraged we can be encouraged in whatever little we are doing but we are making a difference maybe we are making a difference to one person even if that makes no difference to even one person just our attempt to make a difference will make a difference in our hearts in the bhagavad gita uh, krishna speaks to arjuna the bhagavad gita's message and arjuna's heart is transformed that same message is spoken by sanjay to dhritarashtra but dhritarashtra's heart is not transformed still the bhagavad gita does not conclude with 1873 where arjuna says i will do your will it gives five verses to describe sanjay and sanjay's consciousness is is thrilled he says i am remembering krishna's words i am remembering krishna's message and i am thrilled by that rishami chamu hurmu rishami chapun hapuna so what that means is that although externally 
Sanjay was unsuccessful in transforming Vitrashtra's heart, but internally his own heart got transformed. He was enriched with the remembrance of Krishna's form and Krishna's message, and that is wonderful. So, some so the Bhagavad Gita's conclusion. I have a whole class on this. You know, the two endings of the Gita. So, one ending of the Gita points to how there was external success for Krishna and for Arjuna. Arjuna won the war. The other ending points to Sanjay, for whom there was no external success. The Trashtra's heart was not transformed. But both of them, although their external effects were different, internally both of them were elevated. So that way, we can always make a difference, at least in our own hearts. It may not be a big difference, it may not be a wonderful difference, but it will be a worthwhile difference. So does it answer your question, Mataji? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I think we have time for one more uh... Anyone else? Yes, when I probe. So, just uh, probe the uh, about that irrational attraction and trans uh, transrational attraction you spoke. Mm. Thank you so much for wonderful class, probe. So, just one question I have. That um, so how to be minimalist in like our thoughts, probe, which is especially related to irrational attraction, so that like we can focus more on what we can practically do. Uh, Can you explain like, what do you mean by minimalist in this context? So, like, uh, like means uh, uh, the time we spend in random thoughts or like uh, maybe some behavioral addictions, like which consume our time, uh, and like we cannot effectively, uh, especially related to our spiritual sadhana, reading or chanting. So we are not that much focused because of the randomness in mind. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if our uh, we have some attractions that are say irrational and we're not able to focus, yeah, it's very difficult to reason with the mind. Although we want to use reason, but uh, Vishwanath Chakravarty says that using reason to try to control the mind is like using a needle to pierce an iron bar. Mm, it's uh, it's going to be very difficult. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try to use it. There are times when reason works, because the mind is also not like a monolithic creature. With respect to some things, the mind is pliable. With some uh, some things, the mind is obstinate. So we do. It's reason is important for us, and we use reason wherever we can to persuade our mind. But sometimes we run into a iron wall in our reasoning. We just. the reason reasoning doesn't seem to have any effect in transforming our desires so rather than at that time rather than worrying too much about our unhealthy attractions whatever we have we can focus on our healthy attractions and try to nourish them try to strengthen them so we could say you know if say i am here there are many things which may which may draw me toward the dark the dark means something which is unhealthy for me something which is damaging for me darkness can be at different degrees also there are some things which draw us toward the dark and there are some things even one thing which draws us toward the light so you know our human existence is actually in a very vulnerable and precarious condition you no know, we are subject to the play of forces to the play or the interplay of forces far greater than ourselves in our modern times uh, Uh, we don't realize this although sometimes when the nature has say brought the whole economy to a stop the whole world to a stop we do realize the existence of these bigger forces but sometimes most of the times we don't realize it so we could say that there is the daivi sampada and asuri sampada a divine nature demoniac nature so both of these are uh, they represent forces far bigger than us so maya is far bigger than us that is the dark side we could say and krishna is also far bigger than us and we are we are in between so if something starts drawing us toward the dark side it's going to be very difficult to resist it ourselves so rather than trying to fight it try to find something that draws us toward the light that draws us toward krishna that draws us toward the good and cultivate that nourish that treasure that and let that fight with whatever draws drives us to the dark side it's it's very trying to fight with our unhealthy attractions 
is like trying to fight weaponless with a well armed warrior it's almost impossible we'll try to fight but we'll be slaughtered we'll be wounded if not if not slaughtered so it's better that try to find out a healthy attraction and let that healthy attraction fight against the unhealthy attraction that means make some solid con- commitments about whatever is our healthy attraction instead of saying you know i won't spend time watching the political news make a plan okay i okay i like to study shastra i like to memorize verses i like to read some good good books based on shastra so make a plan this much time i am going to do this and if i do this then after that i have some time i'll do that so focus more on saying yes and having things to say yes to in your life then on saying no and worrying about the things we have to say no to because when we are saying no it's like we are pitting ourselves against forces that may be far stronger than us but when we say yes to something higher then we are we are in accessing we are in fact not just accessing but we are submitting ourselves to the forces that are auspicious but they are also stronger than us so then it becomes much easier to resist the pull of the dark side does it answer your question yes sir yeah thank you thank you so much so thank you very much for your uh participation and thank you gaur kumar prabhu for this opportunity to so to be with all of you you know many of you are doing very are helping me in many different ways so i am grateful to gaur kumar prabhu for his uh, resourcefully engaging me in bhakti center and engaging many of the devotees so that i can also uh, assist in various ways i can also do my services in various ways so thank you very much hari krishna thank you so much for your time prabhu ji hari krishna hari hari thank you so much prabhu thank, thank you hari krishna shri prabhu pa dekhi jai jai shri krishna bhagwan jai krishna prabhu ki jai 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 gaur prem anand hari 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 krishna thank you gorsharan prabhu for being here hari bol